Hi YouTube, welcome to Pagan Perspective. This is Thursday. I am your host Megan, aka Sabirisri, and today we are talking all about being eco-conscious in our practice. So this topic is something quite near and dear to my heart. Um, definitely something that I feel like can, you know, bring about strong feelings um, in different ways. And I think also, unfortunately, sometimes can bring about individual guilt for some people or feeling inadequate. I think that a lot of people I've talked to wish they, they want to do more. They wish they could do more. It just doesn't seem practical in their everyday life for them. And so they struggle trying to incorporate kind of eco-conscious things into their life. And one of the things that I say, I'm just pulling up some reference references over there. Um, one of the things that I say is very similar to what Cara was talking about earlier this week in that it's also about what can we do, right? What's, what is the least we can do? You know, if, if we could at least do something, that's better than nothing, right? And so we just focus on reducing you know, that reduce, reuse, recycle that she talked about, um, that most of us know about, we learned in childhood, focusing on what we can achieve and what feels like something that we can accomplish in our own life and starting there. And then as we gain a passion for it or as we have the time or have the energy or are able to, then we can really kind of focus in on what parts of it maybe appeal to us the most that we want to, you know, go a little deeper and go a little farther, right? So one of the things that, um, that I do that I feel like is incredibly valuable is I am vegan. Now I've been a vegan for just about 10 years now. Now a little bit of stats. Now I know that, um, you know, and, and, and I'll be, I'll be quite blunt with it too. I, I guess it, it was very blunt. Um, I don't feel, I, I definitely don't feel like the vegan movement in any way is, um, is misguided. And I think that one of the things that we have to remember is that the vegan movement is different than the plant-based movement. And I think that that's something that is newer and is not something that most people realize is a, a delineation between the two. So in the recent years, I would say probably within the last 10 years, but more so the last five, you've really noticed a separation, or I've noticed, and it has been happening, there's a separation between the vegan movement and the plant-based movement. And let me tell you why. So veganism, was a word that came about because initially to be vegan was just to be vegetarian. Initially, the whole concept of being vegetarian meant no animal products. However, then it sort of got watered down by saying, okay, we'll, we'll have dairy or even some lacto ovo, some, and then some pescatarian types. And so it began watered down with all these different labels and all these different things. And so vegan, the term was created to delineate someone who did not eat any animal products or uh, use animals in any way. Um, or at least as much as is practical and possible. And that's a really big distinction. So some people will say, wow, well, you know, you, you know, what if you needed this life-saving medication that was tested on animals? Well, if you need, if, if it's a life-saving medication, then you're going to take it. So it's, the definition of veganism is to not exploit animals um, or to use them for food or for purses or clothing um, or for entertainment as much as, as practical and possible, okay? So it's not this thing, this blanket statement where, oh my gosh, no way, we'd never ever do that. Like if we need a blood transfusion, oh no, not an omnivore. If I need a blood transfusion, I'm not going to ask where it's coming from. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm not. It, if I need that, I need that. So I think that that's something that does get confused a little bit. Um, and there are, like in any groups of people, there are the most extremes. They're the middle of the roads. And then there were, they're the kind of just, every, you know, once in a while, right? Like any group of people, there's always going to be different levels. 
So the difference between plant-based now, this is sort of this new thing that's come up. And plant-based essentially means that you eat mostly plants. So your diet is focused around plants. That's very different than what a vegan is, which is talking about the whole scope of it. To be vegan, you are vegan for the animals. Okay, that is the primary focus of what being vegan is about. Now, yes, there are super benefits for the environment when it comes to veganism. There are also big benefits to being plant-based when it comes to the environment as well, just by simply reducing the amount, right? Even you can call them reducitarians, or I just think of plant-based. You know, if something is based on something, that doesn't mean that it's only ever something. It's based on something that is helping drastically. So just a few little things. Me, 10 years, I have saved over 4 million gallons of water. I have, you know, saved over 146,000 uh, pounds of grain because grain is used to feed the animals. So that grain could then be used to feed people instead of feeding the animals. Um, I have saved over 100 thousand square feet of forest. Uh, I've also saved uh, 73,000 pounds um, of CO2 from going into the air. Um, and I've saved over 3,600 animal lives. Now these are kind of guesstimates on the average use and average consumption. But when you think about it, when you just think about those numbers, they get so big. And if you get more and more people to be doing some of this, it does start to add up. And when I say some of this, that's what I mean. You don't always have to be all or nothing. That's not the idea behind, I think the whole reduce, reuse, recycle, the whole concept of trying to do better, right? When you know better, you do better. And for me, being vegan, I've been, I've been vegan for 10 years now. So for me, that was what I could do. In my mind, that was the thing that I knew I could do that and that is my way of helping. I don't own a house, I don't own land, I can't, um, you know, I, I'm able to do some container gardening, which I do, um, and I have a backyard, but I can't turn it all over because I rent, right? So there's a lot of things that I can't do just because of my economic situation that I would love to do. That being said, for me, being vegan was something I could do, and I felt confident in it. Now, it might not be the choice for somebody else. It might not be something that they can do. Maybe they can go plant-based, though, or maybe they can try more plant-based meals. Maybe twice a week, having your dinner be plant-based instead of having it be omnivore-based. And one of the things that I think is important to realize is that the majority, the vast majority of food is part of the agricultural and animal complex. We're talking about big business here and it's horrifying and it's awful. The treatment of the animals and also the treatment of the people and the treatment of the environment, all of it is awful. And that big business needs to be thwarted. Now that being said, I still believe that killing an animal is murder. I believe that animals are sentient. I believe they have souls. So for me to kill an animal, like my little puppy back here, to kill an animal would be the same as killing a small child. To me, that's exactly the same. So that's why I'm vegan. Somebody else might not feel that way and that's why maybe they might just be plant-based or maybe they might have a plant-based meal or maybe they're really into recycling and maybe they have completely eliminated all plastic from their lives and maybe there's zero waste. I mean, some people have been able to literally reduce the amount of waste that they create to a, you know, a small, that could fit into a small pickle jar. That is, that is amazing and they are doing amazing things. And those calculations, like I said, all the things that I, that being vegan, I have been able to save and, and help with the environment. If you're going zero waste or, you know, you are farming, you have land and you're able to farm it for most of your food, you know, you're 
helping with CO2, you're helping save water, you're helping doing all of these things. So everything that you do can help toward being eco-conscious if you're doing it in a mindful way, right? If you're doing it with the intention of helping our mother earth. And I think that that's really my biggest point here is that I don't ever want to tell somebody that the way that they're going about helping mother earth is wrong. And I think that that is um, a dangerous road to walk down because when we start saying, well, that's not the right thing because you don't, you're not thinking about all the different stuff because what about this one thing over here, even though the giant 90% of it is here, that's not helping anybody. I know I'm helping the planet. I'm helping mother earth, the earth that I am part of and intrinsically will always be a part of. I know I'm helping her. And I also know that friends of mine who are zero waste, but who also eat, still eat dairy, are also helping Mother Earth. And we all are doing our best with what we feel capable of doing. And I think that that's important, is to recognize what you feel capable and also what you feel called to do. So I would just challenge you, we had Earth Day this week, pick something, just pick one thing that you feel like, you know what, that, that feels good to me. I know some people, plastic straws are their thing. That, that makes them feel like, you know, I'm gonna not use plastic straws, I'm gonna make sure I have metal or I'm gonna bring them or not, not gonna use plastic cutlery, I'm gonna bring my own cutlery when I go out places so that, you know, get takeout or whatever so that I'm not contributing. That's great. Find just, find one thing, one thing that, that calls to you. Maybe it's, you know, planting something in your garden so that there is more oxygen. Um, maybe it is, you know, switching to using more cloth to wipe down surfaces, you know, versus paper towels. It could be anything, right? So find, I just challenge you, find one thing in your life that you feel like could be your way of helping out and try that for the next week. And that's, that's my challenge. And feel good about it because every single thing we do to help, helps. Because if everybody was doing something to help, that makes such an impact and such a difference. And we can make an impact and we don't all have to make an impact the exact same way. If we are making all small steps though, in lots of different ways, that impact will be enormous. So I guess that's my message, my eco-conscious message for this week. I think it's subs week next week and um, yeah. So I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend. And as always, blessed be and aloha. Bye.